Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. Let's play B. It's Thursday, so let's get cracking! Release the Kraken! Sploosh! Let's get to our contestant today. We got David in Tacoma. David, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. All right, Steve, get out of here. Goodbye. Get out of here. For those playing at home, David will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. David, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Ready, let's beat Steve. Richard Harris and Michael Gambon both played which Harry Potter character on screen? Oh, 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 uh, Dumbledore. Yes, beginning with C, what is the real first name of rapper Ludacris? Chris. Yes, Gaspacho originated in which European country? Uh, Italy. No. France. No. Bacho. Uh, Jeremy. No. What band had the hit songs Roadhouse Blues and Hello, I Love You? Doors. Yes. What is the full title of the second Matrix movie? Um, I pass. Shrove Tuesday is the British name for what worldwide holiday? Fat Tuesday. Yes. Uh, what year of the late 70s was the first Star Trek movie released? 79. Yes. What is the opening of a camera lens which controls the amount of light? Shutter. No. Uh, The, uh, oh, shoot. Uh, Iris. No. One, two, Uh, three, four, five. Correct. All right. I think, uh, you know what? I I could be mispronouncing two names. Are you sure? Is it Michael Gambon instead instead of Gambon? Or you or do not know? I, I don't was, know. I always thought it was Gambon. I have no uh, idea. And I always called it Gaspacho. Is it Gaspacho? Am I wrong? Am I wrong about that? You too? literally just said it the same <clears throat> way twice. There's Gaspacho or Gaspacho. Well, that's, it, that, that's, it's that's got that's a Z you, in it, so I say Gaspacho. Well, I mean, you. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, it, I, I just I just want to pronounce things correctly because I I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying you're yeah, wrong. That's where you and I differ. <laughs> oh, you don't care if you pronounce things wrong. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's close on that. I mean, I got pretty close. He kind of re- knew what I was talking about there. I'm pretty sure. All right then. Well, yeah, you're right. We are we do differ on that. Yeah, we we surely do. Well, hey, listen. Uh, either way, as long as people know what you're talking about, what does it, what difference does it make? Right? That's the spirit. Oh, Welcome to my God. world. Here comes Steve. He I'm, knows what's. Yes. I'm sure right. he'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, he will. I hope. Hey, Steve. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Richard Harris and Michael Gambon both played which Harry Potter character on screen? Dumbledore. Yes. Oh. Beginning with C, what is wow. the real first name of rapper Ludacris? Chris. Yes. Gaspacho originated in which European country? Is that Italy? No. France. No. Greece. No. Uh, what band had the hit songs Roadhouse Blues and Hello, I Love You? Oh, that's out of the doors. Yes. I what love, is the full I title love. of the second Matrix movie? Matrix. Steve takes a nap. No. <laughs> Matrix Revolution? No. Matrix 2 Revolution. N- no. Shrove Tuesday is the British name for what worldwide holiday? Mardi Gras. Yes. What year of the late 70s was the first Star Trek movie released? 79. Yes. Nice. Yes. What is the opening of a camera lens which controls the amount of light? Iris. No. White balance. No. Uh. 
Uh, camera. No. What okay. is a group of fish typically referred to as? A gaggle? No. no. One, two, three, four, five. School. It's a tie. It school. is a school. Oh. Yeah, I like that whole band, School of Fish. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. A gaggle well, nice of work, fish. David. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, take it easy, Have buddy. Have a great day. <laughs> school of Fish. Yeah, it's yeah. a school of fish. You yeah. need to go back to that school to learn about those fish. <laughs> Strange that was strange. awesome. Was that uh, was that one of their songs? That's the that only one I know. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, BJ, what's the full title of the second Matrix movie? Reloaded. Uh, what the full title, sir? Well, the Matrix Reloaded. There we go. Yeah, okay. yeah. I wouldn't have accepted Reloaded when it came down to it. Oh, all right then. Well, and I would have had to sit there and flip the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does anybody know where Gaspacho originated from? Uh, which European country? Is it, is it Spain? Yeah. Oh, yeah. dang it. I always go, if I think it's Italy, then I go to Spain, because I feel like those two countries are really related, at least in their language, like a lot of similar words. All right, yeah. Fair so right. I figure, you know, that's why it's like, gazpacho sounds either Italian or Spanish to me. Well, good job. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> and, All right, and let's go with Vicky. Vicky, how do you say gazpacho, uh, And if you were to say it? <laughs> yeah, Vicky, how do you say Gazpacho. That's just how I would say it. Gazpacho. The... I've never had to say it in Spanish. Apparently, uh, I yeah, never knew BJ it was from Spain. thinks I'm saying it wrong. And, I, I, and I don't know, and I don't really care that much. Yeah, that's the thing. I, just, I, just want, I like to pronounce things correct because I just, that's like, and I know he got, I think he got Michael Gambon's name wrong as well. That's why I like, I just want to know why. I don't want to be Michael Gambon. He was uh, one of the guys who played Dumbledore. You answered that oh, question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Remember he, the first he, question? He, he led right into your Harry Potter because your first answer is always Dumbledore. Yeah, it was kind of an yeah. easy one I felt on yeah. that one, and everybody yeah. got it, so. Yeah. Didn't feel too bad about that. According oh, to the just the phonetic saying of uh, of it, it's gazpacho. Gazpacho, yeah, yeah, yeah not gazpacho. It's gazpacho. Gaz, yeah, yeah. It doesn't go. make sense. There's an a there. There's no u there. Okay, I'm done talking to you. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, fine. You know, you're asking me to explain a foreign language and how they do what they do. I don't know. The camera one was aperture, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Oh, huh. good. Oh, aperture. Yep. Oh, gazpacho. Yeah, that's it. Gaspacho. There you go. What's that? This is cold soup, right? Yeah. 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 It doesn't sound appetizing. No, I've never had it. And I, I, I've seen it on like a menu. I'm just like, I don't want that. Like, I've seen it on the Food Network. It's so yummy. It's so good. I'm like, but it's cold. I so want it warm. It's a cold soup with vegetables in it. Yeah. What the hell? Right? <laughs> what the hell? What's wrong with Eat the Spain? vegetables. It's a salad. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a watery salad. What's up with you, Spain? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> what is the reason why they do it cold? Oh, uh, I guess because of hot the, summers, I'm reading. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, okay. That's it. Okay, I can see that. And you need water, so there's there's water in the soup. That It all kind of makes sense. I feel like they probably knew what they were doing, you know, for back in the dizzle. You know, yeah, when someone's like, hey, I want stuff. soup, but it's summer, and it's too hot to eat it. So they're like, screw it. We won't cook it. Enjoy. Yeah. We call it gazpacho. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's gazpacho. Gazpacho. We, we, we call it gambon is what we call it, yes. <laughs> Got a new study out of Australia. Turns out the best way for you to wake up more alert and less groggy is to wake up to a song you like. Oh. Yeah. We kind of don't we do that for people? Look at us. See that? We are performing a public service. Yeah, I mean, every morning my alarm goes off. It's. Nice. It's the donkey. I'm like, all right, it's time to take on the world, BJ. Yeah. Yeah. Every way, every morning I wake up to your picture and I take a dump on it. Whoa. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) It's been a good mood. (laughs) It's a rather extreme thing to do to my picture. Which picture are you doing this to? uh, Well, it's only you. Uh, It's the cover of the 253 magazine. I mean, I figured. Okay. That picture. Yeah. It's available for free at all the Safeways in uh, the South End. I decided to take it on your gray shirt because you'd never notice if it was on one of your black shirts. So, well, at least it's know. a glossy cover. It can clean easily. Yeah, there you go. So you That's can do it multiple true. times. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I have a, you know, I have it, uh, you know, never mind. I was going to go to a very dark place. I don't need to go there. See, I saw uh, something my- on like a Kickstarter recently. It was like, where it's like this new fancy alarm clock that would like, it, you know, it bases things off of your sleep schedule, but it's, it eases you into waking up. With like a certain like musical sound, it's not a song per se, but it just kind of like eases you as opposed to that abrasive. Eh, eh, that I oh, use. dude, uh, the the Amazon Echo has a wonderful alarm sound. I I I it 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 just gradually wakes me up every morning. It's the it's the only reason really I think that I have the Amazon Echo. It's my favorite feature, and it's this, really? this it's just a simple alarm that wakes me up every morning. See, I keep toying with the idea of changing the way that I wake up, but I'm afraid I won't wake up. I, I know I'll wake up eventually. It's not yeah. like, not like I'm just dying. I'll never wake up again, <laughs> just caught in a dream. If I don't have that alarm clock, I'll never wake. 
but I'm always afraid that I I won't wake up on the at, at the right time for work or whatever. I I should try it on the weekend, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, give you it know, a try. Just test it. Oh yeah, I, I have to tell you, idea. Steve, it's it's a gentle way. At least at least the Amazon Echo, the the Alexa's way of waking me up. You'd think that it wouldn't be loud enough to wake me up, but man, I I I it, I, I hear it every time. I know I question it, but then like I know Rev, you do the flow tanks too, and mm-hmm. they 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 have like this gentle new agey music that they play when your your float session is done oh, at the hour yeah, mark. Right, and I have fallen asleep in the tank, like out cold, full on, just done, and I wake up to that every time. So like, yeah, I, but it's I, a pleasant I, way to wake up. Like you feel like you just go, oh, that's nice music, and then finally your brain kicks in. Oh, it's time to leave. But when you're a little discombobulated, you're like, well, well, you wake up, you're like, where am I? And why am I in water? <laughs> like you forget for a oh, second that you're floating. I've, I've had that a couple times, that's and awesome. it's absolute panic when you're suddenly just in water and you don't remember being in there. That yeah. means you. That means you guys have floated really well. Good job, man. So what so. would the song be? Like, so it's, it's got to be a favorite song. I, uh, it's a, any song you like, and they say it should be an upbeat song. That's the one thing. Uh, also, that sound be. of silence from Disturbed. <laughs> yeah, the sound of going I, back to sleep. Uh, it's a great version of that song, but yeah, I don't know if I want to wake up to it. <laughs> Hello, darkness, snooze. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. It's like, come on, Dave. Really? Oh man. Oh, I think I'd go with like a Pearl Jam shockingly song. I think that'd be pretty cool. Like Alive sounds like it'd be a good one because it starts with that guitar riff. It's oh, not, yeah. It's not super abrasive. Oh, at, yeah. At one point, I'm like, oh, Rage Against Machines, wake up. That song would be awesome. But it's it's very like, – <laughs> it punches you right from the start. Well, there's only one song you know. If I have to pick an upbeat song, you know there's only one song that's going to wake me up. Skater you know. Boy. Oh, yeah. See you later, boy. No, it's a rock song. Sweet Child of Mine? That's it, baby. You guessed it. Yeah, that has a good intro, though. I mean, oh, that's exactly why it would wake me yeah, up. Are you kidding me? What a great way to get out of bed. Yeah, I mean, even the texture says, I, I used to wake up to Sweet Child of Mine. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. That, 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 I could see that being my alarm. I got to figure that out. I'm sure there's a way I can figure that out. Wouldn't you be a little but, nervous that like, you like, almost like just want to lay there and enjoy the song? Well, it's kind of like a snooze then. It's only a three, four minute song. That's not so bad. Well, you're not going to fall asleep during the song, are you? I don't know. It depends on the solo. (laughs) (laughs) BJ and Mix mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. Hey, you got something to say? I got something to say. They're wild, rapid, and on the loose. This is listeners on the loose. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose where you pick the topic, you guide the show at 206-421-ROCK. You can also text us at 77999. Whatever it is you want to talk about, we're here for you, man. And just remember, though, you got to follow one of Steve's rules. It's a simple rule, BJ. That's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise... You will be gone, and we'll have to say goodbye to you. Goodbye, old friend. 206-421-ROCK, Texas at 77999. Uh, uh, some people are talking about some of the stuff that were earlier we were talking about reading diaries, if it was a good idea or not, if you had the access to be able to read somebody in your life's diary. And someone said, I went through my ex's diary, and she had all the people that she slept with and also the sizes of all their <laughs> Whoa. units and kissing abilities compared. Oh. oh. That you sounds know like a fascinating read. Yeah, I mean, you know what? She's she, you know, I like it. She's organized. How many pages do you think? <laughs> Depends how descriptive she is. With these say, some are probably short. Some are probably long. It's true. <laughs> do you think there's like a, a section of the diary that she just put that information statistically, or is it like you just have to like you have to surf through the entire diary to be able to find information about the dongs and the kissing ability? <laughs> That is a good question. Like she might have saved the back. Like I know when I was, when I used to take notes, they tell you save the back pages for all your statistics. Yeah. So maybe she would just list everybody on the back page and go, "Oh, there's Jimmy." Yeah. You know. And then you got the long list and the short list, like Danny said. All right. Now, what if you're not with this person anymore, but you caught you, like you're listening to the show and you're like, "I know exactly who that is," and you know that you're in the book. Would you want to know where you rated? Well, Danny's I mean, nodding I, yes. I, I, I would want to know for sure. I think you kind of, I mean, you, you know, if you think, if, if you know averages and you know what life is like, you kind of know where you're rated. But then again, it would be nice to know if you were like the best of the best. Right. Like, how was I in the sea of men that you've been with? Like, yeah. where, where did I rate? Yeah. I kind of want to know, too, I think. How disappointing would it be, though, if you think you're toting around some action and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, no, I'm not. She's, uh, she was able to go a lot deeper in that pool. Humbling. I would be like, all right, I got it. 
Yeah? Yeah, I just be like, all right, I guess I'm not Time as... To get back to the gym. We got to start putting on some more uh, <laughs> weight on the bench. <laughs> yeah, really? Oh, yeah? You, you can do something about that at the gym? No. I would join yeah. that yeah. gym. Yeah, the pull-up yeah. bars. You hang from that. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. The gym really should advertise that straight away. I would, I, even would get me to go. Well, when you go in there, just say, can I... Can I hear about the gym after dark plans? And then oh, you, the gym see, after dark. I was even just thinking about the kissing part, though. Like, yeah. not even about like the the part down the pants and stuff, but like, how would I, you know, how would you rate amongst the other people that they've kissed? Yeah. Oh, I've had. I've unfortunately, my wife took me to kissing school, so I knew I was That's not good. Right. What? Yeah. Oh, Danny doesn't know this oh, story. Wow. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, dude, he went to kissing school and it was in the paper. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that. That that's when I went to war with the papers because the it, we were at a kissing school and it's a pretty private situation where this 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 teacher is going to teach you how to kiss and my wife was like we should go to this and I'm like well I don't have any complaints about you so apparently you must think I need to go to this okay fine and what was this about fifteen or so years ago maybe yeah longer? it was yeah. yeah and I was I was relatively new in town and i thought okay uh you know I, I i when the paper was there i was like whoa but nobody would agree to get their picture taken all the folks said you're not going to take my picture and let everybody know i don't know how to kiss so i said look i'll do it but look i host a radio show and i told them my name please mention the station if you will then i'd be glad to let you take my picture for your story and they did not oh. you know they it was they didn't even mention anything about the radio and that's when i said you know what uh, you guys can kiss something else. <laughs> <laughs> they so, did put your radio name in the article because I'm looking at it right now, and it says Kathy and BJ Shea have been married 18 years. Attending the workshop was Kathy's idea, but BJ went along with it. While he was somewhat skeptical, skepti- skeptical, he said he supports his wife and quote benefits wholly from her interest. But they see Steve. Nobody knew who I was back then, oh, so I really yeah, needed yeah. them to mention the radio station. That's a good uh, point. Yeah, nobody knew who the hell BJ Shea was, so uh, it was a beating. I was not happy. And why, do, you have the, do you have the timeline on it? Was it over 15 years ago? Uh, let's see. The, this article, 2003. Yeah, wow. you're about right. Whoa. Yeah, July there we go. of 2000. I'm trying to see if there's pictures, but I'm not seeing any pictures. There's, yeah, I was right. My mug was right in the front of that picture. Yeah, on this archived uh, Seattle Times story, I'm not finding the picture. It just has the uh, the text. Yeah. Which is too bad. It goes, lip service, kissing school, teaches the art of the sublime smooch. Yeah. Well, there I was. So did it work? Uh, my wife now lives in California, so. Oh, so yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. I'm going with that story. It's Two a woman in Fashion <laughs> Island. That's the one that was uh, that started this kissing school. I wonder if that school even ha- is going on right now. Yeah, you know, that's a really good question. Everyone's trying to find their way to do something. So I wonder if she moved on to other schools, if you know what I mean. It's All virtual right. now, though, because of COVID. Well, she's probably retired now. She's 54 back in 2003. Yeah. Oh, she was. Oh, yeah, she's done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 206 421 Rock, Texas at 77999. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. Uh, now, uh, we were also talking about. Urinating on electric fences. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, today. It's just been a great day today. It has been. Uh, somebody says, uh, yeah, my grandma used to wrap bacon around the electric fence, protecting the honeybees from the black bears. She used to wrap. Oh, oh. So the bears would try and eat the bacon and get zapped? Yeah. Huh. And they would just probably stay away from the whole joint is what the, I guess what she's hoping. Wow. Yeah. Apparently it's called baiting your fence. And yeah, you basically, it's effective against bears because bears don't care about the electric fence. They'll just walk through it. How but, many hours do you have to put into it to become a master at baiting your own fence? <laughs> well, I mean, it's what, 10,000 hours there? Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But you do it with peanut butter, bacon grease, or just bacon. And so they'll walk through the fence because they don't care about the initial shock. But for some reason, when they try to get the peanut butter, they're getting shocked to hell. And they're just like, I'm not going near here anymore. Is that the idea? Uh, Sure. <laughs> okay, good. Good All answer. Right. Yeah. Thank you for that. You know what? Yeah, it just... Because if they walk through the electric fence, it's like, wow, even the fence doesn't bother bears unless you can just get them to grab onto it for a long period of time. Uh, it's because uh, they're going to go for the food and it shocks a more sensitive area like the nose or the mouth oh. area. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Oh! oh. Uh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Well, so I got to remember. 
got to remember that when I'm, you know, fighting bears in the wilderness. <laughs> when you're where you, when you're baiting with bears. Yeah, <laughs> I'm baiting. <laughs> Someone said I touched an electric fence by accident. There were no signs to tell me that it was live. My heart was pounding for the next 24 hours. Oh, yeah. Whoa, it's like that'll happen to bang. you. Bang. <laughs> yeah, right. Another person wow. said I had a friend who was petting a horse on the opposite side of an electric fence. He touched the fence with his tricep, which then shocked the horse, which jumped and ran away. We thought he got kicked by a horse for a couple of seconds. LOL. So he just got zapped and went flying. Oh, man. That, that electric fence nonsense. Yep. I don't need it. I don't need it in my life. <laughs> 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Brian and DuPont, you are on the rock. Brian. Hello, hey, Brian. This is Brian. So, uh... Last Friday, I turned 50. I've been married for 29 years. Um, I've always wanted a Harley. My wife never uh, would want me to get one. I walked into the Harley dealership and drove out with a new Harley. Didn't tell her a word. How'd that go? Um, So I didn't tell her on my birthday, of course, because I didn't want to ruin that. Yeah. But I had to keep... uh, I had to keep sneaking around, telling her I was going for walks, and I'd jump on my Harley and go for a ride. How many? How how, how long and did then, that go uh, on? How did you do that for a week, two weeks, um, a month? For, uh, three days. Oh, three days. days. Okay. Um. Yeah. Before, uh, because unfortunately, she ended up getting the insurance bill. Oh. Before I could hide it. <laughs> She's like, well, and I traded my car on it, too. So she's wondering, where's your car? I'm into walking wow. now. <laughs> like, screw cars. I want to walk everywhere. <laughs> Dude, you, uh, that, that's, that's pretty, that is pretty epic. So how did she take it when she found out that you went and did it, then you lied about it, you hit it? I mean, uh, oh boy, this, usually this doesn't go over well. Well, she calls it my death trap. Oh, there you go. But, uh... <laughs> But, but you, you, and for two days or so, she wouldn't talk to me. I was in the doghouse. Um, she does. She doesn't like me bringing up the bike at all. But it's kind of okay now. Would you say I like it was, how it's kind of okay now because she's not really saying a whole lot to you, but you know she's pissed. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. She hits around. <laughs> Man, I don't feel bad about ordering a T-shirt without my wife knowing anymore. You know, Steve, you got that. Did you know how to ride at all? Did you ever ride before getting this Harley? Um, years ago, twenty some years ago, I rode. Yeah, but oh, it's been a long right. time. Well, at least at least you have some experience. Uh, I mean, if this was the first time you'd ever ridden a bike, at, at and how old are you? Fifty. Oh, 50. Yeah. So it turned 50. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that yeah. would have, yeah, that would have, tri- I think that would have tripped me out too. If all of a sudden it's like, you've never done this before. But if you have, if you've done it before, hopefully she can find some solace in that. Uh, and you've been waiting a long time. And, you know, it's an interesting thing, man. Some do, some people do that. They go, you know what? I am not going to, I'm going to do what I want to do, but I'm not going to be confrontational about it and try to hide it as long as you can. I could never be that guy. I would never be able to, I would fight like hell to get what I want and it, I would make it a beating and finally I'd get what I want, but I can never go behind somebody's back like that. Not for something as big of a purchase as and that. And that's, that's not me either. That's what surprises me. <laughs> when I was walking out, I was like, what the hell did I just do? That's I hilarious. On a bike. <laughs> oh. Well, dude. <laughs> so, hey, uh, now that you've had it, you've, you're in the doghouse. You kind of got past that. Was it all worth it? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I, love, I, I jump on that bike every day after work, and I ride it for about 30 minutes or so. It's well worth it. Nice. Well, hopefully she can yeah. re- realize how important it is to you, dude. I mean, I know she's afraid that you're going to get hurt, but you know what, man? A lot of people ride and don't get hurt at all, so hopefully she can figure that out. To show her anger, at one point she threatened to take wood down and s- set it on fire under my bike. Oh, okay, then. She is really pissed. <laughs> okay. We, yeah. You know, yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I, 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 uh, well, appreciate the call, Brian. Hopefully you and the bike are still alive in a week. And fingers crossed you hit that 30th wedding anniversary. <laughs> yeah. Wow. BJ and Mix Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. BJ and Mix Mornings on The Rock.
99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We got one of life's biggest questions from a text right now. Would you rather have a vending machine stocked all the time with your favorite snack foods or a chilled vending machine full of your favorite beverages? Ooh. Oh, snack foods. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I think the snack foods. That's a great would you rather, by the way. Very easy and nobody got hurt. Yeah, this, <laughs> and, and no dongs were harmed in the, the conversation. Whoa. <laughs> well, yeah. from yesterday's conversation, we had a weird one that involved, never mind. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that was a bad one. I was going to say, I'd rather have the chill beverages. What kind of beverages? Are you alcoholic or are you just going with anything? Well, anything. I realize when I go to the grocery store, 50% of my cart is just beverages. Oh, see, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty basic. I don't really have like a ton of different beverages that I want to drink. But yeah, it's all the snacks. See, I drink a lot of water, so at mm-hmm. that point, there's not much else that I'd have. I maybe have some Red Bull, and then it would just be beer. And at that point, now if I'm going to expand my gut, I'd rather have like snacks. Now, could we include milkshakes into the chilled beverages? Because then I might have to change my opinion. Ooh. Is that a Ooh. beverage? Is that a dessert? I don't, I don't know, know what to call a milkshake. If I, go to, if I go to Dick's and get a deluxe two orders of fries and a strawberry shake, the shake is being used as my beverage. Yeah. But if you go to Dairy Queen, that you know that Blizzard sh- is your dessert. A Blizzard's not a shake, man. What kind of crazy question? Yeah, I mean, they have shakes not. at Dairy Queen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I put it in the similar category. At that no, point, when you I'm, eat with a spoon, the other you drink with a straw. They're totally different things. I know they're totally different, but I'm I'm close enough with the shake that I feel like like I don't drink a shake to go with my meal. I I have the shake as a dessert part of my meal. I think it definitely counts as a beverage if it can be swallowed in a liquid state. Yeah. So yeah. a milkshake that's too thick wouldn't just be a dessert. Oh, well, like see, in the box milkshakes, man, those are. Yeah. Those are, I mean, you really have to like work on it. It's yeah, uh, T H I C C thick. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like your, your cheeks are going inside of your mouth. Like, <laughs> oh, so you, oh, so like you, that, huh? so you guys just count the shake as the drink as opposed to getting also a drink as well. Most people do, yeah, because you it's yeah. the upcharge, yeah, yeah. Because like a Burger King in the past, it'd be like, would you like a shake for an extra dollar and that replaces your 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 Pepsi or soda right. or Coca Cola product? Yeah, see, that's I think um, I think I like the dessert, but all right, if you can pull it, I'm not gonna. If you're gonna have shakes in your vending machine, I'm not gonna say no. Plus, then BJ, <laughs> you could still have a dessert after you have your shake because your shake was just your drink. Yes, don't even worry about the calories. Ooh, oh yeah, that's a good thing to tell yourself. <laughs> I think I used to use that uh, when I was about 350 pounds. Yeah, yeah. see, <laughs> it worked. Oh, those excuses are fantastic. Oh yeah, right. Two zero six four two one Rock Texas at seven seven nine nine nine. Listeners on the loose. Going back to getting shocked by random things. Someone says, "A kid, I was swatted. I swatted at an electric fence. Nothing happened. So I figured it must be off. So I grabbed it. It was on, and it sent a jolt through every joint in my body. Oh man, yeah, I. Uh, ooh, I don't like. I don't want to hear these stories because I've been shocked a few times in my life, and it's a beating. Oh, we got someone who has uh, some information about milkshakes. There's yes. A milk sta- there's a milkshake gas station over here in Kitsap County. They have vending machines in the gas station. You can choose the thickness of your shake. Whoa. Where the hell there's is There's a this? vending machine, a milkshake vending machine? I don't think I've ever heard of such and a thing. Kits- and you can choose if you wanted liquidy or thick. Ooh. Of course, I'd have to try a few just to see which one I like and what the <laughs> proper combo is, the right buttons to push. This, this will is- take some time. I feel like I've seen this before in a it, at a gas station. It, yeah, like it looks like you get a plastic container and you just kind of fill it up. This is amazing. Flavors. Oh, well, and I've never real. I, uh, for real. Real. for real. We've never seen this before except Vicky. It's called for real. F apostrophe R E A L. Wow. I have not. And this is at a gas station. Man, they should have this everywhere. I gotta find this man. Yeah, yeah. See, now they should have this in a mall. Well, malls have restaurants, so they don't want the competition. Okay. Yeah, I guess you pick your cup, you peel off the lid, and then you just place it in the holder. Okay. It just shakes it up, I guess. What kind of flavors are they rocking over there? Let's see. I bet the vanillas. Chips Ahoy, cookies and cream, or milk and cookies. Whoa, they got everything. And uh, my God. Uh, Bliss. uh, They got chocolate chill, cake batter, uh, cool mint chip, and uh, PB cup made with Reese's. There we go. There you go. This is brilliant. Yeah, so it says for real, for real. (laughs) <laughs> and is it good? I mean, how does it compare to like the the shakes that we love? Does anybody have any sort of review? Someone on that? says their daughter gets them all the time. That's okay. a good sign. Ooh, they that are is a good sign. They're in Tacoma. I want to check these out. Somebody oh, close boy. to my house. 
Ah, boy. This is, this is oh. going to work well for me. This is definitely a, <laughs> if I was rich, I would get one purchases. I would totally get one of these machines. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know me. I would get the freestyle Coke, the Coke machine. That's what I would get. I put it on, like above the, the treadmill. And so, yeah, as you're running, you just squirt your mouth with the milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> kill two birds with one stone. I feel like that's not killing the same birds, though. I mean, yeah, you're, you're, really, right. you're, you're really stuffing a bird and then killing yourself. Yeah, I don't know if that's the thing. But so you know just, what? You do it. Guys, For Real has been around forever. Forever. <laughs> Forever. Forever. Uh, Where? There's one in Puyallup at the 112th Street uh, uh, yeah. Shell Station. Is it all South End? There's, no, they have them everywhere. Apparently, there's some here in Seattle as well. What for real? Heck? Yeah, for, for real. real. Where? What gas stations? I mean, I, wa- I mean, are they at like Jackson's type stations? Is that uh, what they're saying? I've seen a lot of Shell. I've seen Chevron. You know what the problem is? Is that I actually don't go into gas stations anymore. Oh. Ever since they're, they do the little thing, pay at the pump, I don't go inside. Oh, you got to get your cookie in the po- uh, in the station, man. That's probably, I, yeah, I don't get my cookie. Yeah, see, that's what I used to have. That I fed my zinger habit that way, and I really had to stop going into the gas station because they have them right there. They know I want them. They know I'll get them and buy them. And now if there's a for real damn shake machine in there, I really have to just basically avoid those places. So much as they've been around for like 10 years, guys. Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, I I can't. I mean, I I've, I've walked through a lot of gas stations and never knows it's a shake machine. There's a few in Bellevue, BJ. There's one at the Sunset Arco, Lake Hill Shell, Sandu Shell Mini Mart, Porter's. Yeah, okay. a lot of options, buddy. Yeah, see, that's the thing is, I I don't think we have any on Mercer Island, and that's where I usually get my gas. Uh-huh. That I mean, or if we do, I don't know about it. Nope. Uh, the closest one to Mercer Island, I think, is the Beacon Beacon Avenue Shell. Yeah, that's it. See, there we go. See, Mercer Island is just like, I don't know why Mercer Island says no to everything. They say no to everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything that's cool, Mercer Island's like, no, oh. no, thank you. Wah, wah. Yeah, well, or either that or either that, someone's saying no to Mercer Island. It could be a war on Mercer Island that I don't know about. All the cool stuff does not come here. I think that's exactly what it is, man. That's what it is. Missing out on all the great stuff. <laughs> 206 421 Rock, Texas at 77999. It's listeners on the loose. Ooh, so I want to know if you can only watch two sports for the rest of your life, what would they be? And the catch is you can only watch one live, and the other one you have to watch on the TV. Oh, that's easy for me completely. Same here. Yeah. All right. What do you got, Steve? Uh, it's high lie and, <laughs> and, and fishing. <laughs> Uh, which one's but which one is live? Oh, clearly fishing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right. No, for yeah. me it's uh football on the TV. Okay. Yes. And hockey in person. Yeah. Okay. So Kraken, obviously. Hook me up yeah. with some season tickets, please. And Seahawks, just you know, pay my cable plan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the, yeah. I think you guys can guess mine. Baseball and football. Yes. Which one is live? Baseball. Baseball's live. There you go. You got it. <laughs> Wow. All right. You yeah. guys picked it. Perfect. I get, I'm get. i going to guess Danny's. Okay. It's going to be football and soccer. Yes. And soccer is live. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I mean, really, Damn, football, Steve, is, football is a great sport to watch on TV out it of all is. of them. It's so much better on TV, man. Out of all of them, it and really is. The time of year. I mean, I, yep. I would rather stay home and make myself a big bowl of chili and warm up on my couch mm-hmm. while watching Monday Night Football. I like going one, one game a year just to remind myself what a miserable experience it is trying to get down there <laughs> to park. The amount of money you spend <laughs> yeah. and the fun you have at the game, of oh, course. Oh, for sure. But I, I, once I stopped having season tickets for the Hawks and started watching games at home, it was such a such a, a smart financial decision, and B, it just, it just removes all the stress. Yes. I enjoy watching the games on the couch. And I really believe you miss a lot by not watching yes. it on television. And it, that's the other thing. You just really miss a lot. Especially if you're sitting – because I used to sit in Section 117. They were great seats as far as, like, close. But – you couldn't get any kind of perception of when a first down was really happening. And when you're watching the 300 level, I had a, a way better experience being able to see how the game was unfolding. But on yeah. TV, it's still better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Vicky, uh, Vicky and Rev. Well, Rev, let's. Uh, Rev I want uh, Steve to try to guess mine. And I actually came up with non joke answers. Okay. Oh, so, okay. So I'm not just trying to troll you on this one. Okay, because I was going to go like Renaissance Fair, <laughs> <laughs> uh, medieval jousting. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to go yes. soccer. And hockey. Okay. And I'm going to say he's going to go to soccer games and watch hockey on TV. Oh, you're uh, you're sort of – well, you got at least one correct in the sports. Soccer. I would go hockey oh. and go in person. Okay. Because I've gone to Thunderbirds games, and those are fantastic and super fun. Always a blast. And actually, the one that I would see on TV would be MMA. 
Oh, oh a sport. that's a sport. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know some people are like, Steve, you wouldn't go with wrestling? I'm like, well, wrestling sports entertainment. I mean, I feel like we're going with the actual sports where you the, the, the ending is not legally predetermined. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you <laughs> Good know, way to put that. It's, de- it's debatable in some sports. Yeah, yeah totally. If you, call, if, you, if you put wrestling in as a sport, I that Steve's head's going to explode because he won't be able to pick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because yeah, you, you have to – I mean, we know you have to watch it because you just paid for another – wrestling service on your TV and you also love going live to see wrestling so that would be tough yeah it's so much fun especially because you run into some people you know and people you don't know and it's just a fun experience it's more like going to a concert than actually going to a sporting event now, Vicky, I, I would can you guess mine I would say that I I didn't even know you like sports really there's, so I, that's a tough one. I, I, does anybody have ooh. a guess for Vicky? I don't think she I mean I, I think she's going to go down the BJ road and, and BJ Shea. What? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a whole other. That's a and whole now, other topic. Go to baseball games. Watch football. No. Damn it. Oh, uh, what I about I go to baseball games? I thought that would be go. Is it go to baseball games? Nope. Oh, oh, go I know. Games. Soccer's one of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. That's a, that's right. I forgot that your family loves soccer. Uh, ooh, what's the other one though? Synchronized um, swimming. Someone just texted it. That's it. <laughs> Close. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, Hockey. I hockey. love going to hockey games. Like, and I love going to soccer games, but if I, I would rather go see a hockey game than watch it on TV. How do we not know that about you? Yeah, I, like I've gone to the uh, Everett Silvertips games a bunch of times. It's a lot of fun. It's wow. just a fun experience to kind of get in that vibe. I don't know any of the players' names, but I love yelling at the other players. It's just you get into it. Yeah. I had no idea that you've been going to Tips games. That is, yeah. I mean, you. It's been a minute, but. <laughs> still, I'm, well, yeah, it's been a minute for everybody. So you've probably seen my buddy, uh, Dawson Butt, play. I have. And I remember the first time I saw him, he got in a fight, and I'm like, ha, but. Yeah, but with two T's. <laughs> He's awesome. He, yeah, yeah, he likes to fight. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another question from a listener. I have a mountain of credit card bills and consumer debt. Can I still keep my house if I file bankruptcy? Yes, you almost always can keep your home and and your your car in a a bankruptcy. Depending on what type of bankruptcy you file uh, would depend on whether or not, for example, you can keep your vehicles if you have payments on them still. You can almost always keep your home if you're current on the payments on your home, even in full bankruptcy. In Chapter 13, uh, you can also keep those items. If you're behind on your house, you could catch your house payments up in a Chapter 13, take off a second mortgage in a Chapter 13. So keeping your, your primary assets like a home and car is almost always possible in bankruptcy. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening.